We still haven't learned how to Dougie, and we still don't know who let the dogs out, but we are back with you for yet another podcast. That's right, it's your pals, Jason Tudor and Keith Pinnell, here for This Show is a JK on our 19th episode. 19, that is so strange. Now I'm going to lay awake at night wondering... Who let the dogs out? You're going to wonder why you didn't learn how to Dougie. I think that's what you're going to learn how to do. Anyway, I don't think that would in any way, shape, or form help my social life. It might. It might a little bit. You can say, hey, baby, I know how to Dougie. And like, what? In <laughs> hey, any baby. case, because that's how I start off a conversation. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Do you know I know how to Dougie? Yeah, I can Dougie. That's right. So um, I could do the Humpty Dance, too. It's a Tuesday audio-only show. That means it's audio-only, although Keith and I are looking at each other after a bit of... Internet fun. Have no idea. We were trying to get in touch with you there, but we had no internet. Um, but before we get to all of the things, let me tell you first that the show is sponsored by my book, Seven from the System, that a couple of you have been very kind to buy and review, and I very much appreciate that. Seven from the System is a collection of seven short stories and speculative fiction stories that are available from Amazon.com as a compendium. It's about 150, 175 pages. It's weird that I don't know the exact page count of my own book, isn't it? Whatever. Uh, but anyway, it's seven short stories that I wrote. They're all based in my comic book universe, the comic book called Vorpal, which is available from Crazy Monkey Inc., Comicsology, and from SpinWiz Comics. And these are seven stories, but they're about like chocolate and cooking and all sorts of really diverse things. So what are you thinking? May fig- I? Yeah, please. May I? Yeah. I just downloaded it uh, two days ago, and I'm about halfway through it. As you said, it's a quick read. It's a quick read. Uh, and... Uh, I'm really, and I'm not bullshitting you or blowing smoke or anything like that. I'm really enjoying it, Jason, and, and I'm glad I went ahead and downloaded it. You know, I, I downloaded Battle Space, but that's a different book. Different book. Uh, different time. Each, yeah, artists, uh, you know, each artist uh, is different, or each author, I should say, is different. Yes. This one is all you, and uh, I'm not blowing smoke because we do this. I'm not trying to get people to buy your book. You know, I read John Scalzi. I read, right. uh, you know, a lot. Some sci-fi off and on, a lot of mill thrill stuff, and uh, it. I'm enjoying your book uh, that you're that you're hawking here. I I am really enjoying it. So so take that from me if you're listening. And you're well. Should I look at it? It's it's. I think it was four ninety nine on four, Amazon. So it's four ninety nine on Amazon. It's uh, the book is. Or if you're local, you can get a copy from me uh, for the same price, although it's priced differently on the Son cover. Of a- Bitch. See, you didn't know that. You should have known that. Well, I'd rather have it on Or you can Kindle get it for a buck anyway. ninety nine on Kindle. Get yours now. Thank you very much. All right, so we wanted to start the show uh, before we get to the yucks with a bit of serious stuff. Not too serious, but we wanted to uh, let you know that we are not tone deaf. Uh, we are aware of world events. We are aware that there are riots and fires and protests, and there's a lot going on in government, and we are not tone deaf to any of this. Uh, We usually try to keep things fairly light. Our goal with the podcast is to sort of spotlight and celebrate a lot of weird things going on. We we initially started this. We just wanted to talk about coronavirus, really, and talk about sort of what was happening in, in our little community here in Europe and kind of, you know, compare and contrast to what was happening in the States. And it sort of blew up from there. And now we've got the brackets and we've got all these sort of weird little things that we do. And, you know, we wanted to have jokes and good, you know, just something to take your mind off of things. We don't consider ourselves a political brand and we, we're not going to flood any of your social media feeds or uh, this show with, you know, a lot of things that you're already going to find in droves in other places. Every facet of this is covered elsewhere. Um, but we agree that equality is not political. We unequivocally support the fight against racial injustices. We both agree on that. Human rights are a big issue, and they're they're an issue for everyone. Uh, We side with um, – we're not siding. That's not the right way to say it. What we would just say is we understand what's going on. We have a great uh, envy – or not envy. We have a great sense of what's happening, and we have commented in our private feeds. So if you want to come see what we think, Jason and Keith think about this particular thing, you're welcome to friend us on Facebook. You're welcome to follow me on Instagram. I just did something today on Instagram that was part of my comic. Uh, that was uh, something that I could do to be a part of this. So uh, that said, again, um, we try to keep things fairly light. And that's what I would say. Keith, would you like to add anything else? 
No, I think that's uh, you said it well for the both of us. Uh, as you said, we we both have our own feelings, uh, surprisingly or unsurprisingly, since the year I've known you, uh, we match up pretty well uh, together. And, you know, the, we're two guys who like to do this and make people laugh. So, and that's what we're about. And that's what this show is about. Again, if you want to know what our feelings are on the protests, the death of George Floyd, on the uh, the cop or whatever, you can you're welcome to friend us on Facebook. You're welcome to look at Instagram. You're welcome to talk to us. Uh, but this show is a reprieve from all that. This show is fun. This show is two guys doing zany shit uh, for about an hour. Uh, and then um, hoping that you'll listen and laugh a little bit. So that's where we are with that. That said, let's press on. Mo- moving on. Moving on. So we golfed this weekend, and for the first time in the three times that we've been out, or four, Keith beat me w- with our own imaginary scoring, which was mostly fair, I think. I think it was mostly – you didn't You didn't say anything. That's going to be a big space in the – I could see it right there at the no, 619 I, mark. Well, I was trying to think of – the times we've kept score, we haven't officially kept. No, we've score never kept officially every time. What we what we so, sort what we sort of do is we hit the ball all over the place, and then we almost get it in the cup, <laughs> and then we walk off the green and go, "That was five, right? No, it was six. Okay, it was six. Yeah. And he'll go, "Okay, mine was a seven. And that's literally how we keep score. That was, that it was, was, pro- that was a five with an asterisk. There, yeah. yeah, there you go. It's a it's a it's a Roger Maris asterisk or whatever it is, right? So it's. <laughs> It's it's one of those things where we're out there to have fun and have a good time, and we sort of keep score. Yes. And if one says, I got a six, and the other one says, I got a five, and neither of us really growl about it, we press on. We, we, we were pretty good with both of that. You know, although one of us may yeah, have gotten absolutely. a 16 and the other one may have gotten a 22, we're, we're both pretty fair, and we're both we're out there to have fun. And this was a good nine. This was a, a great opportunity to go out with... Uh, my friend, your new friend Chad, um, and our new all of our new friends, uh, the the guy from the band Max, the trombonist from the, and that was very cool. It was it was it was a good foursome, and uh, uh, everybody you know, beautiful everybody day. Hit some good shots. Everybody hit some bad shots. Yeah. And it, it was just a fun day, despite beautiful my day. Fetching. Yeah, so that's what I want. Really wanted to get to the heart of this first part oh, of this discussion. Of is it, so it's not a sports discussion, Matt. So you can keep listening. So this is <laughs> the best part of of watching Keith's game, or one of the funnest parts of Keith's game, is predicting when the meltdown's going to come. So. What you're looking for is right around the third or fourth hole. Keith, God, I hate you. Keith is going to take his driver that has a head the size of a bowling ball, and he's going to attempt to hit hit it on the third, which I think is a I think the third is a four. And he's in the first two holes. He's great. He's yeah. smooth. He's in rhythm. He's usually pretty good. But by about the third hole, it's usually three or four. He's going to slice that one, which means you're going to hit the ball and hook it to the right, and he's just going to ah uh, or ah. Uh, uh, it's number four because three is a par three. It is a three. All right, so four. Yeah, so four. Three. Yeah. Or you, so that's the first of the of the longer par. That's four right, holes. and I think that's where it starts for you. Either mentally, you're like, "Fuck, I gotta go on to this four, and then there's a another four. There's not a five until like later on, but but it sort of starts, and you just see you could see the tension building in him. It's like twisting a towel. You know, it just gets tighter and tighter until around. So, admittedly, Keith and I haven't played a full 18 for a number of reasons, uh, but mostly because by the time we're done with 9, we've had something to do or something like that. But usually around, because 8 is the 5, isn't it? Or is it 7 the 5? I don't remember. No, 8 is the 5. Okay, so usually around hole 7, Keith pulls it together again. It, it's like it's like the moon, the full moon comes up, all the hair grows out of his face, he's a werewolf for like four holes and then the moon goes down, the sun comes up high. Which is not good because four I'm Robert is Powell. How are you? Almost half of the round. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it is. And my, I know if my dad listens to this, he's, I'm going to get a text. And he's it's pretty say, funny. I told you why, are you. why are you getting mad? You're not a professional. Why are you getting mad? Here's why I get mad. <laughs> Here's why I oh, get pissed. Yeah. Is you saw the first two holes. I my did. short game was. It was tight. The best it's been yeah, in a long time. It was five by five. It was good to go. Time. Right. So then we go to three, which is a par three. I right. hit a fairly good drive. Yep. I'm just short of the green. Right, right. And what do I do with my short game? No, short game? You hit it to like Montana or something. 
I, I, I sculled it yeah. and uh, it went to, yeah, it went over into the construction in the, in the uh, hospital next door, I think, and across so the road. One of the, I think it went through a, an open car window out the other side. Yeah, it was just bad. One of the unwritten rules when you're out there, it, it, most anything is, you know, even if you, you see that they're doing bad, you don't want to say, well, if you just change your grip or you, you don't do that, you know, or if you just swing it this way, you might say, hey, it's going to be okay. And, and you, you want to throw it. And I try to do that. It's, hey, it's going to be fine. And, and I, I have my share of bad shots, believe me. Now, I haven't thrown a club in a while. That, that's, and, and you almost threw a club this week. I was very proud of you that it did not get released <laughs> from your hands. But I watched him. He said, and then he held on to it. I was like, oh, no throwing club. I can't talk about that on the podcast. Yeah, I kind of so. did a little Zorro yeah. thing. But it really is. Way. It's like the werewolf comes out for four holes, and then the sun comes up, and everything's fine. So that was. Well, and, that was and I don't get. I never ever get mad at anybody else. Right. I never bitch at anybody else. No. It's all internal that becomes a vocal right and i really have to start really paying attention because people aren't going to want to play with me anymore and uh, <laughs> i i really enjoy despite what you're hearing i really really enjoy playing golf because i i can't play softball anymore i can't play football anymore right. i can't play basketball anymore so golf is all i have and it's a it's uh, a uh, it's a good uh it's good to get out there the ramstein's a great course the bomb holder's a great course we just haven't finished bomb holder yet so we have to go finish that but I mean, it's it's a great day. So I mean, it's nothing to be too bad on. All right, so let's stick with sports a little bit. <laughs> stick with sports. That's funny. Sorry, Matt. So just, uh, but not too. I mean, not too sportsy though, Matt. Not too sportsy. So, um, oh, and speaking of COVID, by the way. So we'll we'll give our bit of a COVID update uh, for the golf course. You have to if you're not related or you're not married or something. I guess what that would be related to. Um, you have to ride in separate carts. You can't ride in the same cart. cart together. That's right. So that's kind of the COVID thing on the golf course. Okay, but the COVID thing for Notre Dame Navy, which usually opens the college football nice. season and NBC paid a billion dollars for the contract or whatever, they will not be playing in Ireland. They will be playing I saw that. At, at the place that was formerly called The Vet, but is now, I believe it's like, it's got a real long name, which is dumb, but I'm surprised it's just not USAA Stadium by now. Um, but anyway, they're playing in Philadelphia, so they're going to play there, and I guess... Um, I don't remember. Is it NBC? That get, no, NBC gets the home game. So I'm not sure who's broadcasting. I'm guessing CBS. Anyway, that's interesting because of COVID. They don't want. Uh, they're still right. under quarantine, and they've so they the logistics of it. They must have well, said ain't gonna happen, Captain. It's because of Ireland. Or they Lieutenant were going Commander. to play in Dublin, right? And work. I, I when you sent me this list, I looked up everything. Yeah. And uh, it's because they if they came to Ireland, right. They would have to be in that two week quarantine. That's right. So, and when they went back to the States, they would have to be in a two week quarantine, yeah. which is not great for uh, students in general, no. which is not good for the Navy uh, team because they have other things besides football. Right. And uh, so, yeah, it will be, but it will be the first time in, I, I think it was 78 years yeah. that the opening game or the game between uh, Navy and Notre Dame will. Be at the home of Touchdown Jesus. Yeah, isn't that weird? It's um, it's a strange thing. I mean, this, but these things happen. So, I, I mean, why not play it in Philadelphia? They're near a huge population base. Blah blah blah. Speaking of things that can't unfuck themselves, so the you know the problem that's happening with all <laughs> sports is that they cannot figure out the right configuration to play games because it's not just about playing the games. It's about practicing. It's about um, you know film sessions it's about someone going to get lunch and bringing it back it's about the, and you have you can, have all the uh, the uh, staff you know not not just all in the field staff that's but, right but in the executive offices and and, and, and they the have to come and go so i've heard a couple of proposals from all sports that are like we'll just keep everybody in a bubble or you know we'll, we'll play all the games in one stadium and we'll keep everybody in a bubble there but the problem with baseball right now is that they're it's money and with baseball it's always money but um, the players wanted to play, I think, 114 games. The uh, owners and the commissioner want to play 50. So, but this is really about the players getting a prorated or at least most of their salary for 162 games versus 50 games. 
So baseball's at an impasse right now because of money. I think isn't hockey ready to go? Basically, they've got a. They're just going to run. Think so. They're going to run the playoffs, and they've added more teams. And I saw that NBA has. Uh, they I think they've got a playoff format and set. I, but I, I need to look into that. Thing, yeah. But the baseball thing is what? troublesome because it could kill. I mean, if they can't come to sides, then it's just going to kill their season. The problem with baseball is the less. They are in the national. They make the baseball itself. MLB may be making a ton of money, and they are through streaming and some other things. The less that baseball is out of the spotlight, exponentially in my mind, it becomes more irrelevant. And I love baseball. You know this. I play that baseball sim all the time. In fact, I was playing it before I called you, and I got lost in time. And I'm like, I need to call Keith. Um, but th- I think with baseball, it is one of those things that if it's just not up front all the time, people are like, well, football's coming, you know, and, and basketball's here and, and all these other things. But I mean, what's your take on that? I, I agree. Uh, I love to play baseball. Mm-hmm. In fact, that's my connection to uh, John B. He was my coach when I was 12 years old right. uh, at Scott Air Force Base. Oh, yeah. I love to play baseball. Unless I'm in the stadium, I hate to watch it. Mm. So I like to watch it on TV. If they can't do that, if they can't even bring in, you know, even a, a half crowd or a or a sixty percent crowd, mm-hmm. if they can't do that, nobody. Well, there are, there'll be a few, but the majority of Americans won't care. No, they won't. And my thing is, um, with the with the way that they're going to thin the crowds. Don't the season ticket holders immediately get those seats? I mean, I don't know if there are as many of them, say, in football as there are in baseball, but if you can fit 40,000 people into a stadium, I don't know. I'm just thinking about capacities of baseball stadiums, which are less than football stadiums. But right. thirty to 40,000 people in a baseball stadium, 25% of that is about 7,500 people. I'm guessing that there are 7,500 season ticket holders uh, at, in, with the Yankees, with the uh, the Giants, the Dodgers, some of the bigger clubs. Without a doubt. Now the Royals yeah. may be something different, but you know, and and there are times when the Braves have to like, you know, pay you money to give them the tickets. But um, <laughs> it, it's I don't want to get too up the ass on this, but I mean, it's just it's an interesting impasse for baseball right now. So. Uh, wrapping up the sports thing, Wes Unsell died uh, as uh, before we recorded this podcast. The day of, he was seventy four. Wes Unsell, very um, a great player, I believe, with the Washington Bullets, uh, and but he became an even more important NBA executive. Uh, so it was it, it was uh, sad to see that he died. He was always kind of part of the narrative for me when I started watching basketball in the early nineties, hmm. and then throughout the time. So he was always sort of part of that narrative, whether he was coaching again or GMing or whatever. He was always just sort of one of the NBA's sort of plug-in folks where they could say, okay, we need a GM. Wes will go do it for a while. Or we need a coach over here, Wes. So, but a, a brilliant player. So he's uh, he's died at 74. And uh, yesterday, Pat Dye. That's uh, right. 90 years old, Pat Dye. Yes. Uh, he, uh, just a man among men uh, in the college fo- football world. Uh, of course, he's known uh, at uh, Auburn. Uh, there's statues, I believe, of him at Auburn. Uh, where he won consecutive SEC championships, yes. he was coach of the year. Just, just, uh, uh, and, and from what I understand, just a good guy. So rest in peace to Pat Dye as well. And for my friend Glenn Barnes, war damn eagle for Pat Dye. Uh. Okay, so this was a question that Dee Dee and I were talking about earlier tonight, moving away from sports, Matt. You can come back now. <laughs> um are you a when you're at your desktop oh. computer? Are you an all icons on the desktop guy, or are you a icons in the uh, off the desktop guy? Like, do you have to have all your shit on the desktop in order for it to be sort of accessible to you, or do you need it tucked away somewhere? I am a minimal files on the desktop. You're guy. a minimal. T- t- yeah. uh, I'm, I'm a minimal guy. I have some. Uh, that I'll use, you know, like that have memes in them or whatever, right. uh, photos, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, most of the time it's, it's in the, you know, the, my files or my, uh, no, I can't even think of so it. So you're, desktop. yeah, you're the, you're in the opposite camp underneath. Didi is, a, is a all icons on the desktop sort of gal. And really my, 
and I'm kind of in the middle, believe it or not. I have, a, like, when I'm doing creative stuff, if I'm sort of feverishly working and I've got a groove, I will save stuff on the, the desktop, you know, sure. images, for, you know, and then I'll remember to pack it all away and put it in a folder later. Um, so I'm, I'm really in between. But my take, since I've observed this, is that either people is all shit on the desktop or is ain't all shit on the desktop. And I think is you is or is you is ain't you is or is you ain't. That's right. And I think you you are an is you ain't guy. So that's I was curious uh, for about for the most part, yes. Yeah. I mean I still I was just looking and I have more than I could count in just a couple of seconds, but but uh I also I just over the weekend put a lot of files in my documents. That's what I was trying to think of a second ago. Yeah. Uh my documents and that kind of thing uh on the uh on the drive. All right. Well, that solves that problem. All right. So you had to have heard about Carol Baskin, right? I did. Uh, I didn't read the whole story. That bitch Carol Baskin. I don't want her in my state. <laughs> and uh, but it looks like I don't have a damn choice about you it. You don't have choice. She got the zoo, and uh, it goes to whatever foundation, business, company, whatever she gets. So I suppose that brings uh, uh, the tiger thing back to life. Um, and they and reading the story tonight, Denise was had to read Joe Exotic's whole real name, which is I think even weirder than Joe Exotic, as I recall. I don't have it up here, but it was it's a hyphenated yeah, it's uh, like Joe Smith, Mandible, Socket Wrench, yeah. Exciting, Wonderful Mons, or something like that. It, it's really dumb and long, but it's just interesting to have Carol Baskin in the news. That and and I saw that you posted this. Apparently, we skipped right over Murder Hornets to get to the Ebola outbreak. Uh, because Ebola's back, yeah. and you know it's not enough with all of this other shit going on. Now there's an Ebola outbreak on top of that. The murder or the murder hornets have been you know, now they are backstage waiting in the wings, I guess, uh, hoping Hi, they. I see what you did there. You see what yeah. I did there? Uh, Matt probably saw what I did there too. Um, and so, but Ebola now. So we have Ebola, COVID, riots, protests, injustice, um, and now. We've we've got Ebola, which I think is, but I think it's only in the Congo, right? Yeah. Listen to how I bring this back full circle to COVID nineteen. Hit me, okay? Mm -hmm. The Ebola virus is making a comeback in the the part of Africa, in the province where it was so hard hit, uh, or where it showed up first. What was it? Two years ago? Three years ago? Twenty fifteen, I think it was. I don't know. Boy. Uh, but where it first came out and became so proliferant, prolifer, so bad, and uh, wow, I'm not even drinking. Proliferant. Uh, yeah, proliferant. Uh, that uh, you know, and then it went away, except for a case here and there. Right. Now it's coming back in the same place. I need to look up if proliferant so, is a word. As co. <laughs> As COVID-19 seems to die down, mm -hmm. and now we're opening things back up, how much money do you have to bet that the numbers will start rising, and we will see, even, though, even as we are talking about it amongst ourselves, a second wave? There's no such word as proliferant. I just wanted, so I want to congratulate you. Proliferate. Proliferate. That's what you wanted, but you went to proliferate. But I'm, congr I'm congratulating you because in all of my uh, podcasts that I've ever done, science fiction show and a few others, I'm always quick to note when people invent new words like Hewan and Wistock and some of the others. You have joined <laughs> among them with proliferate, so we will put that into the description. And um, I Check think... Check comic book. Yeah. I think Ebola always gets a bit overblown. Uh, what was it? It was uh, 2015, I think, is when think we were 15, yeah. trying to figure out at the VA where we can have what are called vacuum rooms, which are basically sealed, sterile rooms, and that's where we were going to put Ebola people. Um, but, I, again, this is, you know, there are a lot of people in a lot of mental stress right now, and, uh, you know, they don't need this, so I, I and I wish them all the best. This is this is a really hard time for folks who are you know facing anxiety and, and a lot of other things. A lot of but it's a hard time for a lot of people. So, but they don't need Ebola, and we could have used probably more murder hornets at least. Um, well, and that's what we try to do here is we you know we try to 
lighten the mood just a little bit, make you laugh, maybe maybe give you some information you can use. So along that vein, and in all seriousness, because I've done you know, two, at least two stories I've, since I've been here since the COVID-19 started. You and I have talked about it. Yeah. Find somebody to talk to. Yep. That that about nothing in the news. Just just lay off. Let them talk to you. That's you it. talk to them about anything. Laugh a little bit. Yeah. Uh, cry if you have to. But find somebody to talk to because it's over. So it's over fucking whelming right now. It is. It really, really is. Can't go on social media without seeing something that's going to make you mad, one direction or another. Yep. Uh, you can't. You know. You. It, it's your. You may or may not be back at work. You may or may not have a job. Right. Uh, so you know. In all seriousness, and I'll get off this in in about ten seconds. Find somebody to talk to. Don't sit at home and be inside your own head. Okay. From me to you. And so I will give a plug to a thing that I plugged a lot in my five years with the VA, and that is uh, the Veterans Crisis Line is available for veterans, but it's also available for everybody. The difference is if you're a veteran, when you call 1-800-273-8255, you press 1, and that routes you directly to some folks who uh, maybe understand veterans a little bit more. But if you dial as a human being, 1-800-273-8255, that's just somebody you can talk to. And, you know, if there's nobody around you can talk to, that's a person you can talk to. You can also text uh, 838-255, and they have a, a connect online. So if you go to veteranscrisisline.net, all that info is there. But I agree with you. Uh, it is important to talk to people. I, I have been – I have noticed that I have been talking to people even more, and that probably annoys the shit out of them. Uh, although today I was a little I was a little grumpy, admittedly, so I, I kept at my desk a little bit, and I, I was just on the wrong side of the bed today, and I started off a little bleh. But it got better, admittedly, so that was cool. But yeah, you gotta you gotta get the shit out of your head. It's it's all difficult to deal with. You can't fall on all the swords, right? You can't take up every cost because it will exhaust you and drain you and just wither you away. You have to pick the causes that you want to you feel passionate about the ones you really feel are going to help you and your family and your society and your civilization, the ones that really matter. You can't fall on all the swords. And I think a lot of people try to be too proliferant about that and, and do probably too much from time to time. You also don't need to comment on every Thank you. social media Thank you. post that you don't agree with. Thank you. Let it go. Keep scrolling. You can okay? also uh, the the best advice I, I've given. You don't have to deactivate your Facebook account. Just don't look at it. I I, I know I, they're, they're a pretty regular thing for me and a lot of my friends is I just don't look at Facebook for a week or something like that. Or you know you can just not look at it at all. You don't need Facebook. It's a great connection to have people and know people, but Facebook Messenger keeps you in touch with people. Email still works. Uh, Instagram is a fairly sterile tool that has pictures of, you know, Insta models and uh, Billie Eilish and Kevin Hart and me and my comic and things that are not political. And uh, generally you can find a lot. But the the bigger point is, you, and we're still being serious, I guess, we need to stop this shit. But the bigger point is you don't need the stimulus as, as, as a living thing. You don't need that stimulation. I remember saying that very specifically this weekend, saying, I, don't, I just want to be without stimulus. I want to be without things sort of acting upon me or me going to them and then acting upon me. I just, I'm going to stay away from it. And that's, that's a cool philosophy to have. You know, do your job, do whatever, but just, you know, stay off Facebook. There's, it, there's a lot of compelling reasons to stay off of Facebook. There's even a lot of compelling reasons to kill a Facebook account. Uh, unfortunately, I can't do that because I'm still administrating a lot of Facebook pages, uh, but I may find a way around that. But the bigger point is, you don't, as you brilliantly said, Keith, you don't need all that stimulus and you don't need to act upon it to only increase your stimulus and maybe increase the nervousness and anxiety. So, and by the way, we are, we are not medical experts. We are not. Oh, no. No, no, no. But this is just advice that has helped us. And we have seen handed down by uh, mentors and friends and sm other smart people. So that will make that very clear. You're listening to this show is a JK with your pals, Keith and Jason. You can find us on iTunes. We'd love if you subscribe there. Uh, along with this show, we're releasing the show that came on before this uh, in audio format. So you'll get two, that's right, two shows. If you, So if you didn't get a chance to watch the video show, 
We do video every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, and we do that for about an hour, and that's a lot of fun. And then the other change that we're going to make, although we haven't figured out what we're going to fill on Tuesdays, this bracket for this show, this Tuesday audio-only show, will be the last Tuesday bracket. So the brackets will only come on Saturdays. So we can have a little interaction, do that. And we're trying to figure out how we're going to slot uh, that last 20, 25 minutes. I'm thinking some kind of goofy quiz, maybe. Okay. Let's, let's, test, let's test Keith Pinnell's knowledge on thermonuclear dynamics or something. That might be fun. But we got to work through that. We'll talk. Yeah. Keith and I will talk about that together. We'll get it figured out. So in any case, subscribe on iTunes um, and join us. We would love to have you along. We want to thank all the loyal listeners, Darren and Matt and my dad, and your dad, and everyone else, Ray, and PJ, and all the folks. Um, and we're very excited that um, uh, that you're along. And if you're the person who won the t-shirt, I don't know who you are, unfortunately. I know you by your screen name. So if you're listening, uh, I'll also put a call out on the Facebook page. But unfortunately, I can't extract your email from the challenge, stupid name, a website <laughs> in order to get you a shirt. But as soon as I figure that out, if I can... But if it's you and you're listening, just drop me a note that says, hey, it's me, I won, and I'll get that out to you as soon as possible. With the caveat, of course, remember that uh, we are um, – uh, the mail is still running for medical supplies and things like that, so I don't know uh, how long it's going to be there. All right? I just got – I have four things. I did a little COVID buying. I have four things from Amazon Two, twice today. And it's been weeks since I've ordered. Yeah. Twice today, I had an email from different Amazon orders saying your order has shipped, and I ordered them weeks ago. Yeah. So it's it's not just the mail. It's Amazon. It's, no, it's, it's and, that's what, and I meant I'm everything. sorry. I meant Amazon because like my they they pushed my 3D printer back a whole month, so I'm not going to ah. see that for another two and a half three weeks. I got the filament yesterday, as you maybe saw from my photos, and that's heavy and interesting. But I'm keeping it sealed up, and I still really have to figure out a place to put the 3D printer that's both level and accessible. All right, so it is time for the final Tuesday audio show bracket. Keith has no idea what this is, but I want to give a shout-out to, to Stefan Alford, who helped me create this bracket. Oh. And at the end of the day, he helped me compile the – it's only an Elite 8 today. I did not go the full 16 um, because I was – bosses conspiring against me. So Stefan Afford helped out here, and uh, he gave me some great excuses, and I, I, yeah, we, we typed the ones up we came up with together, had them on my computer, and then I forgot to send <laughs> that text to myself in email, so it is still sitting on my desktop at work. So I'm sorry. I was not able to use all of Stefan's, but I think I came back with at least some of the ones that he and I thought up. And we had some doozies, um, but these are... Best excuses for just about anything. So oh. these are the lame excuses you get for being late to work, for not attending a social gathering, for, um, you know, whatever. Uh, why didn't you do that thing? Well, blah, 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 blah. So that's what this is about. This is best excuses for shit. And so what I, but what I did is I screen capped, here it is, I screen capped something earlier, so I want to lead into it with this. And these are uh, Tutor Doctor, T U T O R, not the awesome name, tutordoctor.com, our favorite funny excuses for missing school. So here are a few. Number one is my dad forgot to do my homework for me. <laughs> I left my homework in the back of a pickup truck, went through a car wash. Um, I won't say that one. Please That's excuse. In Oklahoma. This is my favorite. That's Please that. excuse Johnny for being, it was his father's fault. Um, that's a good one. I love that one. Uh, please excuse Tommy for being absent today. He had diarrhea and his boots leak. Uh, please excuse Gloria from gym today. She is administrating instead of menstruating, I think is what they would. Uh, and another one is Tommy wasn't in school yesterday because he thought it was Saturday. So these are kind of along the same lines. So when we were coming up with these, uh, they weren't supposed, I mean, they could fall into almost any situation, but they may fall into a particular situation. Okay. So, uh, best worst excuses for shit, all right? So, you're, um, let's see, we only have eight, so it would be, uh, what was it, a four and five matchup is, my car had trouble, or I thought the clocks went forward today. Now, that's a very specific one, but that's a that's good... A, only a couple of times a year, or once a year, I tw guess. Yeah, Twice a year, yeah, that's right, once a year. 
But I thought it was a pretty good excuse because that's one everybody can get away with and everybody be like, yeah, right, I get that, you know. So anyway, my car is having trouble versus I thought the clocks went forward today. What do you think? One is really common. Yeah. And one is once a year you yeah. can use it. Yeah. That, that time change, that screwed me out of a date one time. Did it really? Uh, a time ago, yeah. Wow. I was doing a morning show and my first TV station, and I was going to have an early breakfast with a young woman, and she forgot the time change. Oh, it just sounds uh, like she ditched you. Yeah, but it, yeah, never mind. I can't say what I was going to say <laughs> no. because people listen. That's right. Um, Be nice. And then the other one, the car trouble, you know, I think because unless— You can use that everywhere. You can use that with the doctor. Yeah. You can use that at work. You can use that for uh, social gatherings. Tip for a boss. Yeah. Which I did. Yeah. Uh, my first TV station, I said, look, I, my, my car broke down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had to get it fixed. You need to bring us something from the car dealership to prove that that happened. Yep. Yep. So, oh. I'm, so which one do you want? <laughs> Uh, I'm going with the car All right. because so can, that's that's applicable anywhere. All right. Your three and your six matchup are not quite as specific, but uh, could be kind of specific, kind of fall in the same category. Your three is, sorry, my child is sl- sick slash just called from the police station. And, wow. your, and your six is, I never got the email. That's one of, so that's one of my favorites. I didn't get the email is one of the best bullshit excuses in history. One, because you can attach a read receipt to an email and go, yeah, you did. You did it at 306. Why do I have to call you out about this? And number two, it is very rare that you never get an email. It comes in. It's pretty 96, 97 percentile. So you kind of, unless you're you're told by like our guy that, hey, there was a network outage. And if you had any mail that's sent in the last two days, it's shit. Send it again. And that's never happened. That's zero percent of the time. Um, I love... Actually, Didi threw in the just called from the police station. Uh, I love that. But my child is sick is another great one. It's ubiquitous for work, for social gatherings, um, of course the doctor, but a, a lot of other things. So, but if I'm rooting for this bra- or this one, I'd go for I never got the email. Uh, that's where I'm going. Okay, it's just uh, yeah, it's modern. It's uh, because they can't prove you didn't get it unless you unless you do get the read receipt. Uh, but no, it's uh, – yeah, I'm going with the All email. Right. I never got the email advances and moves on. All right. I got to write it down. La, 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 writing it down because I didn't put it in the challenge thing because we don't need it. It's really weird that my my boss is going to be listening to this. So now I've got to Well, he just helped out. Off. He helped out with the bracket. He was nice enough to kind of give me a few minutes after work and – we kind of hashed it. But he listens to the show. Because I said, I, I really don't have an idea. And he goes, what about best excuses? And I was like, that's brilliant. I, cause I, I, mostly because I've been preoccupied with a lot of other things. All right, the two seven, these are both great. The seven is my dog ate my homework, <laughs> which, which is just an all-timer, really, because it, it's false and occasionally true. And then this one is by far, this, is, this to me is a, a top contender. That's why it's the two seed. My alarm didn't go off. Who you got? Tough, right? I've I've had well, I've had my alarm not go off. Yeah, we all have because I forget to set it the night before. Mm-hmm. Um, wow, and I've never had a dog eat my homework. Uh, <laughs> I'm going with the alarm because that one's just easy. Again, ubiquitous, hard to prove false. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, my alarm didn't go off. That advances. I believe that was a two seed. So. We'll- doesn't really matter. Okay, here we are. Your one and your eight. Your eight is, and this is one of my favorites because it's actually happened to me as a supervisor when I was younger. My grandmother died. Oh. And man. but in your head you go for the third time. Yeah. And then the other that your number one is not tonight. I have a headache. Damn. Yeah, toughie, right? Well, no, it's just you're bringing up PTSD now. <laughs> um. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't invoke anybody's death and that's, that's, that's I, what won't I mean. Do people that. do though. People totally fucking oh, do. Uh, people do. You know, my grandmother yeah, died. People do. Really? Cause this is the third time in the last six months she's dead. And unless I'm mistaken, you only get two grandmothers. Well, you know. 
No? Unless you're a blended family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, the, the other one, oh, uh, what is that? That's number one? Number one is, what is it again? not tonight, I have a headache. Oh, son of a bitch. Which isn't an excuse, uh, more of a, it's more no, of like a, but it is, but it's, you know, it's, it's more of a go your ass to sleep, right? Yeah, yeah, not in the mood kind of thing, yeah. yeah. Just tell me you're not in the mood. Just yeah. tell me you never want to see me again. Fine, whatever. Uh, <laughs> oh, dang. PTSD. Uh, not in the mood. Or, I'm sorry, have a headache. That's what I was going to go with as well. Not tonight. I have a headache. All right, final four. We'll click into that. I usually do a 16, but uh, for time's sake. I, and plus, we, when we were doing 16, we were going over. Yeah. So we, we I condensed this one to nine. Oh, or just eight, rather. All right, so your final four. So we've already hashed these out a little bit. We should get through these relatively quickly. My car is having trouble versus I never got the email. I think there's merit to both being good bullshit excuses. I think there's both merit to being actual good reasons. Um, and But it is, to me, they're both, again, I tried to f- frame these as BS excuses for reasons like you come in late or don't go to work or won't go on the date or don't attend the social gathering. I'm usually, I'm older now. I'm much more honest. Like, why didn't you come to my right. party? I didn't want to. Yeah, and that's and that's what comes with wisdom and, and experience. You like, sorry, I'm not coming to your party. I, I just I won't be able to make it. Sorry, that's it. And most people probably yeah. know you by that time and know, yeah, he probably isn't going to come. And then the inv- you know the invitation stop eventually. When that's you know <laughs> you want it's 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 the old axiom you want to be invited but you don't really want to go. You know, as an introvert, I'm like eh, you know. So um, anyway, I I in this case, uh, I I still love the audacity of I never got the email to me. What do you think? Yes, I, I agree. And I was keen on the word audacity there. The, you know, best bullshit excuse, uh, best shitty excuse, I think, is what the we said. Perspicacity. Uh, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. You know, it's if you're going to fake it, you know, fake it all the way. And by the way, if you're so, listening, uh, let us know what you think the best excuses are. We'll post this over on our Facebook page. And you can contribute uh, afterward, but we really would like to hear your best shit excuses or just funny excuses and let us know what they are. All right, so I never got the email presses on from there. And then the other and the other one is my alarm didn't go off versus not tonight, I have a headache. Both really good ones. Really good ones. The one seems to affect you a hell of a lot more than the other. For two different reasons. So two di- <laughs> you know, well, one is not calling into work. Yeah. One is, was, is, yeah. So when I, you know, when I was in the military, you could not use my alarm didn't go off as an excuse. Right. You would get a letter of counseling. And then if your alarm didn't go off again, you would get a letter of reprimand. And then if your alarm mm-hmm. didn't go off again, you would get non-judicial punishment, which is something that happens with the Unicorn Code of Military Justice. And then if your alarm didn't go off again, or and maybe again, you were going to become a civilian. Because that's sort yeah. of how the military works. It's kind of a get your shit together. I remember one boss was like... Look, your commute may be 30 minutes. Give yourself 45. Get here earlier. Because you can't say the traffic was a problem or this, this, and this. You have to be at your assigned station at time. That's how this works. If cops have to right. do it, you do too. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, but that well, said – go ahead. What? Uh, you know I'm, I'm generally – except for Petra. I'm in there before anybody else. Yeah. I hate – being late. Yeah. Absolutely hate being late. Yeah. So I can tell you right now that if I say my alarm didn't go off, that means there was a power failure or I you know I set it wrong because you know now I can set it I can set it for 5 days during the week. Right. It won't go off on the weekend. Uh, so if my alarm didn't go off, I say, and I tell you that the alarm did not go off for whatever reason. All right. Um the other one man um again it's painful. Yeah. Uh, basic, basically the last five years of my marriage. But anyway, uh, Boy, there's some honesty folks. You uh, don't get that on every radio hey, show. Yeah. I, well, I know she's not going to listen. So, yeah. um, uh, the, I, I'm going to say not, not tonight. I've got a headache. That's, I think that's actually, I agree with that one. I think that's uh, that's the one I like too. That's, that's again, that's ubiquitous. So our final round is a, a pretty easy one. I never got the email versus not tonight. I have a headache. Not Again, I because I made the bracket, and I understand the audacity of excuses that can be thrown your way because you have a fucking hangover. I get it. 
How about just saying, look, I, I, I'm not going to make it into work today. Um, I'm taking a sick day. That is a great way, one, if you have sick leave or sick time or whatever it is, to sort of just avoid the whole conversation entirely. I don't need to know, right? And you don't have to make up some excuse. You could just say, hey, I'm not going to be in today. I'm taking a, a, sick, a sick day. And the earlier in the day you do it, the better. And then we just sort of go on with our lives. And then the next day you show up and all that's lost are eight hours of sick leave. Or, you know, however that works in whatever right. job that you have. Um, they, uh, so to, to me, job I, oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm just saying. So I never got, I never got the email. Sort of falls into that sort of. Again, I, I know I've said it a couple of times, but it falls into that very brash sort of category. Um, and again, if you mean it dutifully, and you did, there was an email outage, and you never got it in your box. And I remember one time I thought I sent something to Stefan, and it actually ended up in DJ Tink's box. And I have no idea how that happened because Q, well, I guess Q is above the A, but you know how you do when you're in Outlook, you type the first three letters of somebody's name. So I must have right. typed either QAL or something or just hit the Q on, you know, surreptitiously. But she's emailing me going, uh, what do you want me to do with this? And I'm like, sorry, that it was nothing to do with you. I apologize wholeheartedly. Um, and I, again, I must have, because I've emailed her a couple times about business, but it must have slipped off the fingers. So... Not tonight. I have a headache, though. That's uh, again. That that's I, that affects you. That's got a that's got a grip there. I can I can feel that. Well, so I, I imagine this is you. tough for you. But if it were me, I go with. I never got the email. Plus, it's modern. So, do we need to flip since this is the final two? Yeah, because not tonight. I have a headache has, has lasted the course of time. So you've got the modern sort of new excuse versus. Yeah, go ahead and flip. What side do I get tonight? All right, so he's holding up the Dallas Cowboy coaster, uh, which, again, if you haven't heard the joke, why can't you get change from a dollar from a Dallas Cowboys fan? Or a Dallas Cowboy, rather, because they can't give you four quarters. So I, I love that joke. It's always very funny. So, But tonight he held up his coaster. Uh, it, and one side has Dallas Cowboys stuff on it, and the other side has a piece of black felt. So which I get the, the good side, right? Yeah, you get the good side. All right, flip it. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Survey says... Show me the money. It's going to be, I never got the email for the win in the final Fine. Tuesday audio bracket on this show is a joke. Yeah, you probably can't use, not tonight, I got a headache to call in sick. No, no. Though you can use, I mean, there are I've got a migraine. Patients. See, that's, that's a different deal. And so, yeah. you know what? As a supervisor, and as someone who's had to listen to other excuses, obviously, you kind of get – after a while, you start to have fun sort of grading these things. You know, you, you kind of overhear <laughs> people or something. I have a migraine. Okay, that's fair. You know, um, I did this, you know, uh, la, la, la. You, but you never hear – so you kind of put them on a scale and you go, okay, that's a good one. Yep, yep. Oh, that's a good bullshit excuse. Yep, yep. Or no, that's a real excuse. Yep, yep. So you just sort of have it in the pantheon of things, the, the sort of contact list of excuses when you hear them. And – you get you know, over time, but but you never hear like I was really hungover and I, I'm I'm drop dead shit faced and I just can't make it into work. That's one you won't hear because that will lose you a job, uh, and a few others, you know. But yeah, these are I think in doing this bracket, it was just about those sort of ubiquitous sorts of excuses people use to get out of doing things. I think that was what it was. I had a coworker or uh, at uh, the last place I was. Yeah. And he called in and said, hey, I'm, I'm not going to make it in today. I'm taking a sick day. Mm -hmm. Short and sweet. Perfect. Okay, great. Yep. And so I go you to lunch. You are entitled to sick leave in people. the federal government. Yeah. So I go to lunch uh, with a couple other people from the office at uh, the golf course. Uh-oh. And, and there he is. I was going to say, here it comes. And, and we talked, you know, we, we later, the next day, we talked about it. And he said, Keith. It shouldn't matter where I'm at when I'm taking a sick day. They're my sick days. That's right. I can take them however I want. That's true. He did, said, like and, he didn't and, say and, he threw out his back. And that stuck with me. So, you know, if I call in sick, it, you know, well, I don't have to tell you I'm and sick. There's, and so there's, I mean, not, not that we want to get too deep into this sort of process right. thing, but there's there's a lot of gray area with sick leave, right? Sick, sick leave falls into a number of categories, including taking care of family and friends and going to doctor's appointment. What if you set up a doctor's appointment that was supposed to be two hours. You took eight hours of leave because you, th you thought whatever was going to happen, labs or something, was going to take all day, and it ended up taking like two and a half hours, 
And you're like, okay, I've got the rest of the day free. I can either go back to work and burn some, you know, burn, or not burn the sick leave, or I could just take the eight hours because I've got 1,500 hours of sick time. Why don't I just take the day? So that's why you, you, I mean, you have to be careful with sort of making judgments on things. And, and that's why in, in, as a humorous thing, that's what this was supposed to be, those sort of excuses that people Absolutely. here who are supervising or whatever, and they go, oh, really, that again? You know, that's, that was kind of the turn here. So, But yeah, I, I, I totally understand it. But, but again, I, I very much try not to make those judgments. I really just try to yeah. say, okay, but when the grandmother dies for like the third or the fourth time, that's when I'm like, ah, maybe we should pull in and have a talk. Because then as a supervisor, you're kind of going, well, maybe this is something bigger. Maybe this is something we need to talk about and help her out with or help him out with and, you know, that kind of thing. So, all uh, right. It so got what, to the point uh, at, at my last uh, position where the phone would ring because I was first one in the office. Right. Uh, the phone would ring and I would just go, well, who's calling in sick today? You know, that kind of thing. So, <laughs> well, and, uh, and figure, I mean, figure there are businesses that do that every day. Think of all the first respond not first responders, but the people who served food and at grocery stores and other places where they weren't, they were crucial workers, but they were still getting paid a minimum wage or they were crucial right. workers, but they were serving food for still at two eighty five an hour. Although most places went to, to go and, you know, those kind of folks like, why should I go in today? You know, what if I, you know, and then all of a sudden those businesses get short staffed and I mean, on and on and on. So, all right, we've got nine more minutes. What else you got? Happy birthday to two lovely women. Yeah who I wish were in my life. All right. Morena Bacaran and Jewel State. Great names. Do you, do you recognize those names? Not a clue. They are Honora and Kaylee on Firefly. Ah, okay. That's, so that's, because of that's Firefly, a good pull. I have to bring it up. That's a good pull. And I- they share the same birthday. Oh. I took a sociology class one summer that said if you get more than 12 people in a room, yeah. that two people have the same birthday. That's not a bad bet. I'd probably take that bet. All right, but I, I, I can top that. Not that I want to be a topper, but I can top it. You ready? Yes. No. Ha- yes. Happy birthday to my dad, who I believe is 76 years old. I always screw this up. Uh, my dad's a Vietnam veteran. He was the uh, a SEAL before there were Navy SEALs. Uh, and he rode on a minesweeper, and he did all sorts of cool stuff. But the coolest thing he did was help give life to me, so I appreciate that a lot. Um, and my dad is a, is a pretty neat dude, and I always thank him for listening to the podcast. But happy birthday to my dad today, and happy birthday to my sister, Kim, whose birthday is tomorrow, which would be the day after we're taping this podcast. So just to be clarify, we're taping this on June 2nd. My sister's birthday is on June 3rd. So happy birthday to both of those people. Uh, and uh, that's uh, Dad Tops Firefly, I think. Can you hear Not me? from where I'm sitting. Oh, Because right. he's not... He's not as good looking as those two. Women well, are, and you but, do record a you do record dad, a you do record a podcast with me on business. Saturday night, so that you know that, I think that that goes to that. All right, so we talked about the Ebola. Oh, I didn't talk about the two people who sexually assaulted a horse in Aiken, South Carolina, twice. Thank God it wasn't Oklahoma. Twice. twice. They were not charged twice. Once. Twice. They were charged twice. Twice. And uh, they were not married. Yeah. And just, yeah, I looked that one up, too, after you sent that to me, and uh, what the hell? Yeah, I know. Isn't it weird? We just can't get out of our own ass with some things, but, you know, we got to fucking go sexually assault a horse, because that's in our DNA to do so. I just, ugh. Ah, it's fun it's times. It's my DNA. But it's, it's, that, but I it's, mean, I've been... I've been well, it's in somebody's DNA. For, I've been single now for or alone for a year. Yeah. And at no point in the last 11 months. Yeah. Have I thought I need a horse? <laughs> well, I'm going to go find a horse. There's yeah. a, I know where some horses are near my house, but I'm not interested. Now you guess I think this would be a good pl- time to play old town road if we had the rights to music, <laughs> but we have no rights to music. So in any case, I guess we will leave it at that. Um, so, Anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, we are proud to bring you this show each time we do it. We appreciate you listen to the whole thing, and we appreciate that if you would subscribe, do that on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Spreaker, NBC, CBS, CNN, Fox News, uh, where else? HuffPo, Breitbart, 
probably not any of those, but the first three or four I mentioned are relevant places to get the podcast. We also post the podcast on the Reddit podcast page if you want to check it out there. Uh, we have a Facebook page, pretty easy to find. It's facebook.com slash real JK podcast, but you can just type in this show is a JK. We will come up there. Um, again, I implore you, uh, the show is sponsored by my book, Seven from the System. You can pick that up on Amazon.com. Just search for my name, Jason Tudor, or Seven from the System. You can also find my comics on Comixology, which is an Amazon joint. You can find them on SpinWiz Comics. My friend Jeff Palumbo runs that. And you can find it uh, through Crazy Monkey Inc., who is the publisher of my said comics as I go to work on issue number four. Anything else before we go? What kind of shirt are you wearing? I can't oh, see that. It says uh, Kareem Magic 1987. Wow. Yeah, that's right. That's awesome. By the way, Kareem, uh, so two things. I'll, I'll close this since we started on a serious note, and you brought it up. I'll close on a kind of a serious note, but a, a hopeful note. Uh, so Khalith Wright is the top enlisted person in the United States Air Force. I just happened to be privileged enough to uh, be taught by him as part of my professional military education for about two weeks or three weeks while he came to Lodge's field on a temporary duty assignment. We also played flag football together, and he had the strongest arm of anybody I've ever witnessed throw a football in professional college or otherwise maybe jeff george uh but i've never seen anybody throw a ball farther with more accuracy than he did uh more than five times that i remember in any case he wrote a an amazing column uh, about events and what being black is like african-american and what that is like and his experiences uh if you can find it on your facebook feed i implore you to check it out khalith wright is his uh full name and then the other column that I, I would implore you to check out is, uh, speaking of Kareem, he wrote a great uh, op-ed, as he usually does in times like this, uh, talking about events and things like that. So if you can find the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar article, I implore you to look at both. You got any recommendations before we go in two minutes? No. Um, if you want to stay up with what's happening in pro football, I highly recommend Peter King. You've heard me talk about that before. Yeah, uh, he's good. This week's he's a homer, but Mondays, he's good. Yeah, Monday's article was uh, was pretty poignant uh, concerning what happened over the weekend. Uh, so, and very unsports, unfootballish uh, until the end of the column. Uh, so, Peter King, I like, and uh, uh, Kalithra, I read that one this morning. It's a good one. And uh, so it was. Uh, it it's been a day. It's, it's been, been a day. A week. Peter King and my friend uh, Bill Barnwell from ESPN. He writes some incredibly in-depth uh, articles on football using statistics and data and analysis. And he's done that since he was 16 years old, and we used to play in a simulation football league together for about four years. He's a great mind, and I really appreciate what he does at ESPN. All right, that's it. Thank you for listening, kids. And we will see you uh, for the video show on Saturday where Keith, or maybe I should come up with the next bracket because you did last Saturday's, and this was the last one. Oh, we'll let you do it. We'll f let you figure it out. Keith will have the bracket this week, and then we'll figure out what we're going to do on the Tuesday-only audio show. We love you. Hi, Darren. Hi, Matt. Hi, Dad. I love you. See you. Bye. <laughs>